Gentles and lady men, I'm Spiro, and I'm not a wizard. I'm starting off a new video series now um, that I'm hoping to make sort of quick videos, well, quick relative to me, oops, um, and the, the background for this is partly um, talking to a nice guy on the um, on Mastodon, so that's a um, federated social network. Uh, his his name is the Zero Bit, um, aka Free Computers, and he's just getting into learning basic on the C sixty four, and. Part of this is also the last day I've been also playing around with um, TRS-80 emulator. I've never had any experience with TRS-80s before, and the 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 uh, to me to me the most amazing thing about retro computing in this day and age is that we can do everything with emulators. The emulators are so amazing, and you know we don't need to fork out for 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 hardware that most of it is going to to be failing or have already failed um you know we we can learn we can play with emulators if we've got the real hardware great um but part of this channel the the motivation behind this channel is to inspire people to learn about these retro platforms and the easiest way and the cheapest way because it's free is with emulators um so <clears throat> my 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 experience today with with working on the trs80 has been fine um but it was unbelievably difficult for me to find out just how to save a file in the basic interpreter how to save a file to a disk that is not in the primary disk drive um, <clears throat> and it's kind of made me realize that that's something that having some basic tutorials starting out like that um, would be good and you know I, I don't want to this might be this might be too simple for for most people <coughs> excuse me my <coughs> my asthma <coughs> throat puffery thing has made my throat go all funny <coughs> and you know so I don't want to presuppose what level of knowledge someone has going into something because everything well, every everyone starts somewhere and this I want to make the the very basics on how to write, um, save and load basic programs on the Commodore 64. Um, so I'm going to start off with I'm using the Vice emulator, and so I'm going to start you off on I'll make the I'll make my color text a bit easier to read, so I'll turn it to white. Um, <coughs> The way I did that was by pressing Control and Two. So the the and that's something that's not going to be. I'll talk about this in a later video. But um, you can change the colors of your cursor with by pressing the Commodore key or the Control key and the digits. So you can play with that. I'll, I'll leave this white so that it's a bit clearer for you to read on the videos. Um, so. Let's say, for example, we're going to write a simple program. Now, we want to print the word Hello Internets. All right. So, to the, the basics of writing a, a, a basic program is we need to have a line number. Now, as 
kind of normal practice people tend to to make their listings their program listings um, in multiples of 10 so the next line I add would be line 20 the line after that would be line 30 we're going to have a simple command called print this is this is the basic command print and all that does is print a string of text to the screen the string of text is going to be in double quotes and it's going to say hello internets if we press enter that enters that in so now we've got a program listing if we type the word list that will give us what we've written in so far so if we add another line go to 10 so this command will say when you get to here you should redirect or you should go to line 10 and then continue executing and then it will print hello internets then it will go to the next line which says go to 10 so this is going to create an infinite loop of hello internets uh, <clears throat> very uninteresting um, so so now the difference between writing that in with line number prefixes uh, you can actually write these basic commands directly so if I just type print hello internets with a lot of exclamation marks notice I haven't put a line number in which means I'm now I'm now executing or or entering in a direct command for the Commodore 64's operating system to interpret right now. So if I put that in now, it will respond immediately with the command I had put in. I told it to print hello internet exclamation exclamation and it did so. But you'll notice it when we put a line number on it kind of said okay i'm going to store that in my memory i'm not going to execute it right now the way to execute that stored program which if we type list just to refresh our memories and now consists of two lines line 10 and line 20 that really is just to say i'm ready for you to give me something else to do um, so in fact you could think of it as entering in a line number so if we type in another if you you could think of it as the line number being a direct command for store this next thing I type into memory I guess it's another way of looking at it um, so if I type in print you'll never see this and I press return I now have a program that is three lines line 30 you'll never see this because the program will just continue to loop around those top two lines if I didn't have that line 20 it would print hello internets and you'll never see this so to run the program that we've entered in we use the direct command run nice and simple hit return and that'll start printing that out forever we break out of that by pressing on the emulator escape on a real 64 we would press the run stop key um, I might consider doing a, a separate line of videos for the actual hardware. Um, so we've now got a program that we effectively runs those first two lines. We can change a line or we can delete a line. If we type in 20 we don't need to do the space if you just type in 20 and then nothing else after it it is going to um, 
it is going to basically wipe line 20. So if you think about it, like I said before, we're entering a direct command of a line number. Um, th that command doesn't have any extra parameters, but it's still saving something in memory. It's still doing something. And in this case, it has deleted the line, right? Because I didn't enter in anything after it. So it thought, well, I don't need to save anything. It's a waste of memory. I'll just wipe it. So <clears throat> now if we run the program, we get those two lines, right? We can reinsert a line in between, and it doesn't even have to be line 20. We can insert line 11. Go to 10. Now if we list the program, we've now got line 10, line 11, line 30. So what will happen if I run the program now? Exactly. It will just repeat as it did before. And line 30, you'll never see this. You will never see. Okay, now, the, the fundamental thing, so this that is a generally uninteresting program, but an important thing that we want to be able to do if we make generally interesting programs is to save them onto disk and load them back off disk at a later point. So... <coughs> What we can do is if we go to file, so I'm using Vice, so this should be pretty standard. Now I've just noticed that my, oh my god, my capture program doesn't capture the menu. Well, that is shit. If we go to file, we go down to create and attach an empty disk image. Oh, that's garbage. I'm going to pause the screen. Technical difficulties. This is what happens when you don't plan ahead. I just tried to do a video capture. Anyway, uh, window capture. So now, okay, so now I've got, you can see the entire thing. <coughs> We're going to go up to file. We're going to create and attach an empty disk image. So what we're now going to do is we're going to create a blank disk that we can store our stuff onto. So I'm just going to create a new folder here called um, basic videos. <coughs> right. So I'm now going to create so this is where we set the file name. Okay basic series 001 and we're going to call it D64 and that is the the file extension is just the format for a Commodore 64 disk image um, we're going to mount that into unit number 8 so leave these all defaults down here we will have a the 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 volume name so what we're going to call the disk so when we do a directory which i'll show you later when we do a directory it will come up with the disk label and it will come up with an id number that we can specify so let's call this basic series id number zero one okay we'll leave the type to d64 and we'll go save. So this has created for us a blank disk. <coughs> we can view the disk by going, or well, we can attach the disk by going file, attach disk image, drive 8. Okay. So now it is asking us what image we want to, to attach. And 
Basic Series 01.d64 is the one we just created. So because we entered in things like the volume name, Basic Series, and that ID number, Vice, the emulator, has formatted the disk for us. So we don't even need to do that, which is great. So we will go Attach Load. So we've now attached the disk we've created and <clears throat> we can now save our program. So let's get a refresher of what our program looks like. And we can save that with using the save command. So what we do is we can specify um, a file name inside double quotes. So let's call it uh, basic space 01. Now a file name on the Commodore 64 can only be a maximum of 16 characters. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we go we're going to go save file name and then we've got to go comma and then the drive number which in this case if you remember it was 8 which is the the drive that we mounted our disk onto. If we we have multiple disk drives, if we mounted our disk onto drive 9, we just might go comma 9. Now if we leave this, the, we can leave the number off and that will default to tape. But I don't find tapes interesting and for the purposes of these demonstrations uh, I'm going to stick to disks. So we're going to put comma 8. We're going to hit enter on that. You can hear the disk drive going. Cool. It has saved basic 01. Now that we get the ready prompt, it has saved it to disk. Now hopefully, I'm not sure if we can do it just yet, but if we go and attach a disk image, ah, we can. It Vice has updated it, so now we can see that inside there, our program that we just saved, BASIC01, which takes up a whole one block of data, is now saved on this disk. Okay. So, if we were to, let's, let's do a couple of interesting things. Let us detach drive 8 and reattach our image in drive 9 so now we're going to the so imagine if we had a physical um, Commodore 64 with two disk drives we've now taken our disk out of drive 8 and we've put it into drive 9 the files are on there the files haven't changed what we're doing is we're just changing where we're where we're accessing it. So let's attach that. Now, one more command is new. Now you'll see I did a list. Our program is still there. I'm going to go new, which wipes the basic program in memory and starts us clean. If we type list, you'll see that, that those lines are now no longer printed. We've got a new program. What well, we, We've We've, we've cleared memory for us to enter in a new program. So what we want to do is we want to load our program off the disk again. But remember we've changed the drive. So now there's an interesting... We, we're going to load a directory first. So we do that by saying we want to load a dollar sign from drive 8. Now remember there's nothing in drive 8 at the moment so this is going to fail. So what we're the, um, the dollar sign is, is, a, is a Commodore 64 operating system shortcut for a directory listing. <coughs> um, there, there are a whole lot of other things we can we can send, this is basically a command we're sending to the disk drive. Um, so if we load 
it's going to go tick 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 file not found i can't find a directory for drive 8 because there's nothing in that drive and you can see this is going flashy flashy mcflashy face now if i go load oops oops box dollar sign comma nine device not present ah oh. Did I not? Does attaching the disk image not enable the drive? Well, that's quite interesting. I was not aware of that. I thought Vice was smart enough to... Um... <coughs> All right. We've encountered a failure. Cool. So let's go file reset. We're now going to reset. We'll do a soft reset and see if that lets us. Um, actually, let's reset drive nine. I wonder if that'll help. Nope. Drive nine doesn't appear down there anymore. We can do a reset drive eight and that clears that flashy blinky error. That's cool. But let's reset. Oh, come on. My computer isn't the fastest. Let's go reset and do a soft reset. Okay, we still don't have drive 9. Let's do a hard reset. We still don't have drive 9. I was not expecting that. Oh, I wonder if I've started up Vice in a way that doesn't have multiple disk drives. I'm using a terrible configuration. This is a good learning experience. So let's go to drive nine. And if let, well, actually, let's go to drive eight. So you can see how drive eight is configured inside Vice. And it is a CBM 1541-2. So that's the Commodore 1541-2 drive. Now that's a pretty common standard drive. <coughs> um, it's it's uh, more recent than that. Well, that, this is the old model drive. This is the newer model drive. So, let's go to drive nine and turn on CBM fifteen forty one dash two. So we shouldn't need to do anything else. And as you can see down here, drive nine appears. Great. So. Let's just double check that we've got our disk attached in the drive. Change my colour to white so you can see that again. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get a directory listing oops, of drive 9. Our disk drive is going. It sounds great. We're now going to type list. Um, this is an interesting quirk of the way Commodore Basic and the the, op, the basic operating system works is that we're actually loaded. If you notice, the list command is just like we did to list our our basic program. Uh, and a, a weird quirk of the C64 is that we've actually loaded the directory as if it was a program listing. So it's, it stored it in a similar way in memory. So now if we type list, it's not going to give us 10, you know, file name, 20 file name. It's going to list it in a different format, but it's doing it in the same kind of way. So if we type list, we can now get a list of what is on that disk. And 
we want to load our program that we saved, basic01, and we have to still specify the drive letter. So we're going to go comma 9, and it will load basic01 into memory so that now when I type list, it's going to list the program that we had saved earlier. So, this video, I'm going to cut that there. Um, we've learned how to write our own little programs, we've learned how to save them onto disk, we've learned how to load them off disk, and we've learned how to uh, reconfigure Vice so that it can talk to multiple drives. And that, and that will be useful later if, say for example, we want to load um, a, a program, uh, uh, say a utility of some sort, uh, or, uh, from one disk, but we want to save our data onto another disk, um, then then that will be useful. So, one, I guess one little final thing is, once you've made that change to the settings, just go ahead and click on Save Settings, uh, and then that'll save it in your default configuration file. So, I hope that was useful. I know it's very basic and a lot of people um, will 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 want to wait until later episodes. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I, I, I'd like to make this a bit more of a series on um, of of the basics of programming in BASIC. Uh, not, it's not going to impact my other videos that I make, obviously. I've I've always got a lot of things going on at, at the same time. Um, and, yeah, it'll be... Leave, leave your comments and let me know what things you would like to learn about. Um, and, and, and I can make a video focusing on that. Um, I've, I've got, I've got a basic idea of, of the next few steps. Um, but yeah, any, any, any way I can help, um, if I can offer you some, some help on, like if you're stuck with something, um, then I'm more than happy to help out. So thanks for watching, and thanks for your support. Please leave your comments and thoughts below, and I'll see you in the next video.